Hey there, you magnificent lot. Welcome back, or if you're here for the first time, a warm welcome to our channel, where we love to chat about all the diverse flavors of love and life. Today, we're opening up a spicy discussion about polyamory. Peppered through history, polyamory, consensual, open, honest love between more than two people has been part of many cultures. Take the ancient Greeks, for instance. Many of them were openly polyamorous and they celebrated free love with enthusiasm. They even coined the term agape to imply the love towards more than one person. Ain't that cool? Now let's pepper in a pinch of comparison. Polyamory may remind you of polygamy, but they ain't the same, folks. Sure, both involve more people in love than your average couple, but the differences are key. Polygamy is typically one individual, usually a man, marrying several partners, but in polyamory, all involved parties are equally heard and loved, and it's not all about tying a knot. Just think of polygamy as an old school cookbook recipe and polyamory as a freestyle cooking jam. And now for the juicy part. History is full of people who've spiced things up with polyamory, some even among the most iconic figures. Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers of the United States, was known for his, let's say, unconventional love life. He had numerous love letters and correspondences that suggest his affinity for multiple relationships. Friedrich Nietzsche, a philosopher, poet, and overall deep thinker, was also a fan of the poly lifestyle. Their lives and stories tell us polyamory is not a newfangled trend, but something deeply woven in our human history. Hope this sizzling serving of knowledge has stirred up some thoughts in you. Remember, love like a good recipe can come in many forms. So stay open, keep exploring, and let's continue this hearty conversation in our next videos. Take care, folks, and let's keep the love flowing. A little trivia for you. Did you know that the term polyamory popped into existence only around the mid-90s? It's a combination of the Greek word poly, meaning many, and the Latin namor, which translates to love, put them together and voila. We've got the whole idea of loving many. Now, you might be thinking, isn't that just being unfaithful or a player? But no, my friend, polyamory is quite different from those terms. It's a method of conducting relationships where you can have multiple romantic or sexual partners, and it all happens above board. It's not sneaking around behind anyone's back. Everyone involved knows and consents to the arrangement. It emphasizes honesty, open communication, and equal respect among all partners. It's like playing a game where everyone knows the rules and nobody's left feeling cheated. Despite its relatively new title, the concept itself has a much longer history. Polyamory has seen a bit of evolution. It's not a static definition, but more a fluid understanding of relationships. In the past, it was often intermingled with notions of free love or communal living, particularly in the 60s and 70s. Over time though, it's developed its own shape, distinct from other forms of non-monogamy. In recent years, polyamory has gained more visibility and acceptance, gradually losing its scandalous vibe. Today, the polyamorous community is diverse, including people from different walks of life with shared beliefs. Love isn't limited, and it's possible to have meaningful relationships with more than one person at once. At its core, it maintains the same values revolving around consent, communication, and respect. But like any good idea, it's proven its flexibility, adapting to suit the needs and desires of the people who practice it. So here's to love in all its forms. The more, the merrier, right? So how about that quirky little twist in the 20th century love tale, huh? Yeah, I'm talking about polyamory. This distinct way of love blossomed mainly due to a few pivotal moments back in the day. The, the free, Love movement of the 60s and 70s, for instance, hugely influenced how we perceive love and relationships today. It was a radical stand against the then established norms of monogamy, and people started exploring the potential of love beyond a singular partner. Then we saw the rise of the swingers culture in the late 70s and early 80s. This popularized the concept of non-monogamous relationships, albeit in a predominantly sexual context. The emergence of polyfidelities groups in the mid-80s, who believed in multiple committed relationships, also added a new facet to polyamory. Talking about the present, have you noticed how polyamory has started to trot quite comfortably into our pop culture? You're not imagining things, friend. There have been um, plenty of TV shows, movies, and even books that have showcased the polyamorous lifestyle in a positive light. Anyone here catch Big Love or You Me here? 
no spoilers, but you might find the plots interesting if you're curious about this. Brace yourself because the social media and internet era totally changed the game. The digital age has been kind of like a fairy godparent for the polyam community. It has not only simplified the logistics, but also helped to form a social identity. Social media platforms and online communities became the go to meeting spots, perfect for exploring and educating about polyamory. Online dating apps also jumped on the trend, offering options for non-monogamous relationships. Guess what? The internet also facilitated the spread of polyamory narratives and acceptance across the globe. It helped to cultivate a broader understanding and acceptance of love in all its forms. And that, my dear friends, how love waved its magic wand in the wonderland of the 20th century and beyond. Um, you know, when polyamory first landed on society's radar, it caused quite the hubbub. Folks were used to monogamy, right? Two people, one bond started getting jumbled when people began openly committing to multiple partners. Naturally, there was a smidge of a kerfuffle for numerous people. Some viewed polyamory as a threat to tradition, while others found it confusing or strange. Now, popping over to studies on public opinion, it's been a mixed bag. Some folks dig it, others don't. Researchers from Indiana University and the Kinsey Institute found in a survey that while more than 20 of people had tried some form of non-monogamous relationship, only five were currently in one. This tells us that while curiosity is budding, people are still testing the waters. People seem to be slowly warming up, but there's still a fair amount of apprehension. Over the decades, we've seen some shifts in societal acceptance for sure. Back in the late 60s and 70s during the free love movement, more folks began getting on board with non-monogamous lifestyles. Cut to the advent of the internet, online communities started popping up, providing safe spaces and discussion boards for folks interested in or practicing polyamory. Fast forward to the present day, representation in media is indeed incrementing, which could be helping to normalize polyamory and make it less daunting for some. But as old Gramps used to say, change comes slow, like molasses in January, and it's no different with polyamory. It's not overnight that attitudes revamp, but we circling back, we can see that the conversation has started, the wheels are turning and acceptance is on the up, even though there's still a good long road ahead. Polyamory is challenging, to put it lightly. Sure, it sounds exciting. Multiple partners, multiple love interests, multiple bedrooms, hoping that's not tiring. But let's be real. There are negative aspects that can bring a heavy toll on your relationships. Juggling one partner is not always easy. Imagine juggling multiple. It can stretch your ability to provide time, energy, and emotional availability. Jealousy and insecurity can bubble up, resulting in conflicts. Keeping things fair can also become a Herculean effort. And then there's the judgment. Grandma Sally might fall off her chair if you mention your two girlfriends over Sunday brunch. Well. Most cultures and religions have tied love, relationships, and marriage to two people only. Monogamy is what has been championed full stop. If you go delivering talk about polyamory at your local church, synagogue, mosque, or temple, you might as well bring a shield for the storm of criticism heading your way. Many religious texts talk explicitly about marriage between two people, so deviating from that norm can drop jaws. Sit yourself down and consider the psychosocial challenges tied to polyamory too. Living outside of what Hanoi society deems normal can be tough. You might face stigma, have to explain yourself regularly or even deal with discrimination. And let's not forget the impact on mental health. Polyamory requires constant communication and negotiation, which means conflicts are almost unavoidable. Then there's comparing oneself with other partners. It can feel like living in a perpetual state of keeping up with the Joneses. It's not all vanilla and roses. So yeah, polyamory can be grueling. You might want to really think it through before diving into that big open love pool. So let's dive right in, folks. We're talking history of polyamory, a uh, topic sure to tickle your curiosity bone. You see, this notion of having a slew of sweethearts isn't as newfangled as you might think. For ages, many cultures around the globe have practiced forms of polyamory, from some indigenous cultures of the Americas to historical figures in ancient Greece and Rome. Speaking of historical figures, let's chat about 
some of the brave and bold souls who helped shape the landscape of polyamory. Let's give a round of applause for the Bloomsbury Group. This was a loose collective of writers, artists, and thinkers in early 20th century England. These cats really broke some molds with their non-traditional relationships and their significant impact can still be felt today. Fast forward a few decades, and let's give a tip of the hat to writers like Robert Heinlein and Robert Rimmer. Their science fiction novels led mainstream discussions about polyamory out into the open in the 1960s and 70s. They made the idea of multiple consensual love interests a little less alien. No pun intended. Okay, okay, enough looking back. Let's take a gander forward to predict what's cooking for polyamory in the future. With more people prioritizing individual freedom and personal fulfillment, polyamory might just be inching towards the norm, more accepted and understood. Increasing visibility in the media is surely pointing in that direction. So, my lovely peeps, there you have it. A fun little romp through the history of polyamory, our woke forebears, and a peek into the swirling crystal ball of what's to come. And if I've tickled your noggin, do me a solid and smack that subscribe button. Better yet, blitz that like button for this video. Let's let the world know that multifaceted love has a rich past and could have a pretty sparkling future too.